Welcome to BPPS Podcast. Podcast number 21. The Feast of Life. This is my rendition of the exact transcript of the sermon. The Feast of Life. that was delivered by bishop jesudasan at the world council of churches assembly in vancouver canada on 31st july 1983 bishop jesudasan's sermons are remembered for their clarity of thought their grounding on god's word their depth of understanding of cultural context his unique way of combining eastern and western elements their relevance to the occasion and for their force of delivery and impact he always approached the pulpit with utmost sacredness only to preach god's word and never for any other purpose a lesson his father had taught him Bishop Jesudasan came from a very humble background and was exalted by God to positions of leadership. He was a presbyter in the South Kerala diocese, became lecturer and subsequently principal of Kerala United Theological Seminary. He was elected vice chairman of South Kerala diocese and then its bishop for a span of 17 years which is described as the golden age of the diocese during this time he was elected deputy moderator of the church of south india and later its moderator for three consecutive terms he was co-chairman of the CSI CNI Marthoma Joint Council a member of the Anglican Consultative Council Council for World Mission and the World Council of Churches being an elected member of its central committee for 10 years he has authored several books that are Christ centered and expound the word of god with great depth of theological understanding and insight bishop jesudasan was a man who was faithful to god's call he truly made memorable his name jesudasan which in his mother tongue malayalam means servant of jesus he had a true shepherd's heart and did his utmost to keep the people of god united he had the attitude of a servant leader lived a simple life had absolute trust in god walked in his integrity before god and men was compassionate to the poor cried out for social justice commanded the respect of secular and religious leadership alike was a man of prayer spending early morning hours in reading and meditating on god's word and wherever he went spread the fragrance of the knowledge of christ and brought a sense of god's presence to all worship services and meetings he conducted he spoke to god in simple words with the certainty that he was heard his theology was centered around the light of god's love that god caused to shine through his son jesus on the cross and confidence in the spirit of god's transforming influence in the life of individuals and communities having known bishop jesudasan as my dad's first cousin for 41 years and having enjoyed his love and care because of his close knit brotherly relationship with my dad 
we fondly call him bishop uncle i wish to pay tribute to him on his death anniversary today the 16th of june through the rendition of one of his blessed sermons the feast of life for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes the sacrament of eucharist is indeed a festival of great joy the feast of life because here we celebrate the wonderful and unique act of god by which he shared his life with our humanity this is the cardinal mystery that we proclaim in and through the sacrament god in his boundless love had shared his life with us by sending his son jesus christ to take upon himself the fallen human nature and to give us eternal life the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth and the son of god shared his life with humanity by proclaiming the good news to the poor by doing deeds of love and finally by laying down his life for all this unique sacrifice is the source of abundant life to all people the holy spirit makes christ's life a transforming and life-giving power in the world but how do we participate in this feast of life the lord of life calls us to humble ourselves to leave our pride and like peter to be washed by our lord who emptied himself to take the form of a slave when we come to our senses we would also confess before god's embracing love just as the prodigal son did i have sinned against heaven and before you i am no longer worthy to be called your son we feel the compulsion to cry out beating our breast like the publican god be merciful to me a sinner it is only the poor in spirit who are deemed worthy to enter into the joy of the kingdom if we approach the lord's table with contrite hearts and empty hands there awaits for us the bread of life the lord is ready to fill the hungry with good things here in vancouver we the representatives of different church bodies who acknowledge and proclaim jesus christ the life of the world are privileged to celebrate this eucharist offering thanks to god our heavenly father god's people from all nations tongues and cultures have come together to make this occasion unique we are thrilled at this grand spectacle which gives a foretaste of the heavenly scene of the great multitude which throng around the throne of god singing the new song of praise as we read in the book of revelation against this glorious and luminous backdrop we are alarmed to see the acts of betrayal still being enacted in our day principalities and powers around us cause fear and anxiety as in the days of christ during these days we have been made aware of these frightful depressing modern betrayal scenes the darkness that surrounded jesus christ was basically a spiritual one caused by unbelief 
according to the new testament witness eternal life is to know the father and his son jesus christ and the work that is pleasing to god is to accept jesus christ whom the father had sent for our salvation for the witness is that in him we have life and it is this life that we are called to proclaim to a world in spiritual crisis many in our world do not care to have vital spiritual relationship with the living god through his son jesus christ so atheism agnosticism and different types of secular materialism are on the increase we cannot deal with them either by ignoring them or by replacing them with other concerns it is in this context that we bear witness to the living christ who says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness st paul says that the kingdom of god is not eating and drinking but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy spirit at the eucharist we are made to see the terrible loss that happens to life whether individual or collective which is not related to god through christ we are called upon to feed the world with the bread of life and lead the nations to the living waters christ sent the disciples to the upper room to make arrangements for the last supper they went and set one table for it painfully we still sit at separate tables in the ecumenical upper room excluding each other in the name of him who invited all to his table propping up our differences with theological arguments it is however a happy thought that the liturgy that we celebrate today is a sign of the advances we have made on our common understandings on baptism eucharist and the ministry it is at this table that we become aware that truth is not a theological affirmation but the sharing in the life of our lord this feast is and always will be one that calls and compels us to be inclusive poet markham says he drew a circle that shut me out but love and i had the wit to win we drew a circle that took him in what is the context of this feast we know it only too well that millions suffer all over the world living under poverty oppression and exploitation the crafty designs of unjust socio economic structures crush the voiceless poor they cry for justice in the name of freedom values of the kingdom of god are brushed aside and for selfish gains and pleasures of life people choose to walk on the road that leads to death our societies are producing more and more drugs delinquents unclaimed children broken homes etc are these not symptoms of disintegration of our modern civilization people in such conditions stretch out their hands for help consequent on the massive accumulation of nuclear weapons we live under the dreadful fear of total annihilation of the human race the abundant world resources are being wasted on destructive purposes while poverty continues to assume alarming proportions indeed the creation itself mourns over the irresponsible and sinful acts towards nature and its resources the frightened people all over the world earn for peace while political structures defiantly ask 
am i my brother's keeper the church too is often tempted to pass by the great indian sage and poet tagore says thou art the brother amongst my brothers but i heed them not i divide not my earnings with them thus sharing my all with thee in pleasure and in pain i stand not by the side of men and thus stand by thee i shrink to give up my life and thus do not plunge into the great waters of life we are very much conscious of the darkness that surrounds us god has opened our hearts to be concerned about the situations of which we have just heard it was in the midst of challenges posed by destructive forces and death that our lord instituted the sacrament of eucharist as the feast of life and then laid down his life to win victory over the powers of death in christ we find the new life which god shares with the world and learn the secret of the life in god jesus said whoever loves his own life will lose it whoever hates his own life in this world will keep it for life eternal eucharist celebrations become meaningful only when it points to a sharing of our lives i will most gladly spend and be spent for your souls says paul to the church in corinth on september 1224 the holy cross day saint francis of assisi prayed thus in a prayer vigil who art thou my god most sweet and what am i that unprofitable servant and vilest of worms o my lord jesus christ two graces do i pray thee to grant unto me before i die the first that while i live i may feel in my body and in my soul that sorrow sweet lord that thou didst suffer in the hours of thy most bitter passion the second that i may feel in my heart that exceeding love wherewith o son of god thou wast enkindled to endure willingly for a sinner's agony so great may this be our prayer as we take part in this holy eucharist thank you for listening bpps podcast